Um, I, I want to show you my, uh, uh, Lucy and I, we are married for uh, 38 years now. And um, in the end, I'm going to tell you a little bit on my story. Uh, if actually, um, if Lucy is here, um, she would also tell her story, you know, how we met and happened to uh, know God's will um, and how we could even decide that she's the person for me. You know, that kind of uh, decisions that, that helped me uh, to decide on, um, on, on our marriage, on our relationship. Okay, um, let's see. I hope I'm getting. Uh, can we read this? Uh, life and even more the favor of God. This is from the message translation in uh, NIV or in King James Version. He who find a good, uh, who, he who find a, a wife find a good thing and obtain favors from the Lord. But in the, uh, the message translation, find a good spouse, uh, you will find a good life. I think that's very true. If the spouse is good, then you have good life. If not, if the spouse is bad, you have bad life. And, and even much more, finding a good spouse, a good wife, husband, is God's favor. Uh, can we also see this? Uh, let's read this again. Father can give their sons an inheritance, houses, and wealth, but only God can give an understanding wife. This is from New Life Translation. Understanding wife, understanding husband, only God can give. That's what it says. God is the source. God has, you know, in his, in his storage, if we may use the word, or in his banking, God has good people. And how you draw out from that is uh, by fearing God or asking God. Then uh, this is about, I'm going to tell you about a story uh, that is about Abraham's servant. He was sent to find a wife for Isaac. And we are going to draw about six, seven principles. Um, by the way, um, it was a way back in uh, 2001 that our Toshi, our younger son, I think he was about uh, uh, 12, 12 or 11 years old. And Daniel was about 17 years old. And so on Good Friday, today is Good Friday, Good Friday, Easter Sunday, we, as a family, we went out for a, um, for a camping, and um, I was uh, talking to my two sons about this, and I asked them to write down the six principles drawing from this text and how to find a good wife. You know, both of them wrote in their Bible, and uh, they are still keeping those, you know, principles, and I hope that uh, if you listen carefully, uh, finding a spouse, uh, finding a husband, finding a wife, uh, God is interested in us. Um, can we read this? Do you like this? Dear future husband, find God first. Huh? And find yourself, <laughs> don't be a lost man, <laughs> and then find me. This is a good way, very brief and yet to the point. Uh, first of all, find God, and then you will know your identity. You know, you will know who you are. And find yourself because God helped us to uh, even accept ourselves. Self-acceptance is very crucial. And then uh, says that, then find me. Now, we wa I want us to read this too. Let's read this. When God knows you are ready for the responsibility of commitment, he will reveal the right person under the right circumstances. Wait patiently. Don't waste your time searching and wheezing. Grow and be ready. And you will see God will give you a love story far better than you would ever dream of. The right person in the right circumstances and for the right purpose, God gives us. So don't be in a hurry. Huh? 
or don't be like a, like a plane, you know, going to land emergency landing. You know, I must decide tonight, and I cannot wait for you know that is God's God's will doesn't happen like that. And so, in the right the right person, the most important is responsibility for commitment. Marriage involves. Tomorrow we are going to talk about Christian marriage, and uh, in that Christian marriage, uh, I am going to dwell much more on artificial infatuation, love and true love. How to differentiate between uh, infatuation love and infatuation is artificial love, okay? Just make up love, uh, or in some songs, it is called puppy love. You know, a puppy comes to you uh, waving the tail like this and licking your, ha- you know, your hand, and if you hit the head, the puppy runs away. You know, that kind of love is called puppy love. But uh, we will talk more on that, how to differentiate between true love, genuine love, and not real love. The simple reason is don't think that you are too young to know. Because life, um, you will come across uh, so many teachings outside of the Bible. But we want to, you know, fix ourselves uh, with God's word. And that's why we will, uh, we will do that. Uh, let's see. Uh, there are two types. Sorry, there are two types of God's will. Uh, one is called God's perfect will, which is the best. Uh, God has a plan and He has a perfect will, but there is another one called God's permissive will. God's permissive will is something like the second best. For example, um, God's perfect will would have been um, for Judas Iscariot would have been uh, to be transformed to be a good disciple of Christ. But Judas was not transformed at all. God gave chances for his improvement, and yet Judas did not capitalize on that. And so Judas ended up committing suicide. And so even King Saul, for example, King Saul was the chosen king. And yet he sort of, you know, go down, down, and finally he end up, uh, you know, in the wrong way. And so there is permissive will, that is the second best, and there is God's uh, best for our life. Uh, Two types of God's will, and then why should we know God's will? What do you think? Why should we know God's will? Any response? Because it is the best, and to know him more, and the best for me, um, why you want to know God's will? Uh, It is the best. What else? So that we can make the right choice. choice. Thank you. Um, Yes. Yeah, okay. God's plan is the best, you know. He even prepared the best place for us. And so God has a plan. And why do we need to know God's will? Uh, We will go into that. Okay, let's, let's see. Let's read this together. Marriage is instituted and designed by God. You better consult him. He alone can lead you to the right person of his choice. Marriage is not founded or instituted by a government, not by thinker, not by philosophers. Uh, but God, when he created man and uh, woman, he instituted uh, an institution called marriage. And so marriage is instituted by God. Family is instituted by God. Communism wa- doesn't want family. You know, they want to scatter children they want to, you know, keep them separately so that people grew up without having any uh, siblings, you know, or a relationship. But God wants us to have a relationship. So God, we need to consult Him so that God will lead us to the right person of His choice. Do you think God knows the best in that area? Very often we think we are smarter than God. 
you know. Sometimes young people ask me, uh, do you really think that God is interested in me? Uh, I used to say, I think so. <laughs> I, I know he is. And, and God is interested in each one of us. So God will lead us to the right person of his choice. Then let's read this also. Marriage is a long, lifelong commitment. You need to be sure of the commitment you are going to make. Because it's a lifelong commitment. Uh, these days, there are three or four types of relationship. Uh, there is a, re a relationship called, they call it trial marriage. You know, trial marriage is something like, let's try and see whether we can live together. So they, you know, they live in one home and they simply call it trial marriage. There is a contract marriage called three years contract, five years contract marriage. When the contract is finished, they discuss whether they should renew the contract years or shorten the contract years. In Hollywood, in a Hollywood movie, the shortest marriage of a couple is only 47 minutes not even one hour. They got married just outside. They drive, and as they were driving, they had some trouble, you know, and they shouted one another. They drive back to the marriage center and said, we want divorce, and so they signed divorce. It takes only 47 minutes. And if you call these people he, your idols or heroes, I don't think that you're going to have a wonderful marriage, <laughs> you know. So uh, it's a lifelong commitment. Marriage is a lifelong commitment, and it is not like a smooth sail. For example, there is a saying that boats, okay, boats are very safe in the harbor, but boats are not made for to stay in the harbor. They are made to sail in the sea. You know, life is, we may be very safe not doing anything, but life is to live. And so there will be challenges, there will be struggle, and those are challenges that we are talking about in terms of this lifelong commitment. Um, let's read again this one, the last one. Marriage is second most important decision you are going to make. You don't want to make a mistake. The first decision, which is important, much more important than a marriage, is my decision to follow Jesus Christ, to be his disciple. Uh, I was class nine or standard nine, grade nine, and um, I made that commitment. There was a youth rally. Uh, young people were in the church. And a friend of mine said, uh, please come to the church. We are going to sing. So I said, okay, I better see how my friends are singing. So I also went into the church, and it was raining. So outside, I actually don't want to go inside the church. So I was standing outside. Then the ushers said, please come. No, since outside is raining, please come inside. So I went inside the church. I said, uh, I will come only on one condition. They said, what? I said, I will sit in the end, and I will be allowed to go out whenever I like to go out. They said, okay, okay, please come. So as, they, as I enter, the last row, uh, the seat, they try to push these young people, but it's packed. It's not moving. So the second row, they try to push, not moving. So I follow them. The third row, not moving. And finally, I end up in the front. Oh, my goodness. When young people are presenting special number, I cannot even turn my back. So I was facing the speaker, and the speaker was facing me down. That night, the speaker was preaching on, up near, your hands are not bound, neither your feet are. Why should you die like a fool? Abner was one of the best general, and he was, you know, there is a line drawn. This side is Hebron. If he stepped inside Hebron, 
he is safe. But one feet away, he stood outside, and he was waiting for a man called Asahel. And so did Asahel came and pierced him just outside. So David, King David said, up there, why should you die like a foolish man? You know, from that text, I said, just one step away from Christ, I can be lost. So that night, I make a decision. I stood up when there was an altar call. I stood up uh, as a young man, uh, ninth grade. I said, I need Jesus in my life. And uh, uh, I knew something happened in my life, that Jesus saved me, and Jesus is my Savior. And so it is important for us to make that decision. The second decision is to find our uh, life, life spouse. Uh, can we read this together again? So many broken marriages and homes are primarily the result of not seeking God's will. So many broken marriages, you know, broken relationship are because they don't, they don't seek God's will. They did not pray enough for God's will. And that's why they have made a mistake in their life. Uh, they cannot stay on. They only have trouble because they don't pray. Um, the longer you pray, the better you get, you know. And so you, you need to start early praying for your future wife or future husband um, because uh, prayer is very crucial, very important for our life. So God's will. Why God's will? Because God is the one who will give you uh, the best for you. Let's see. Is it coming? Okay. Okay. All right. Here it is. Uh, how do we find God's will? And this is the, the area that I talk with my two sons. I pray with them. I say no sex before marriage. Uh, um, and, uh, and I say to, you know, to them, uh, I, your daddy, I keep myself clean without any relationship before marriage. And that was my prayer too. When I prayed for my future wife, in fact, uh, that was 1975, I started saying, God, I don't know where my wife will be. I hope she is somewhere. And so I said, keep her safe and keep me safe. Um, and it is important. Your future husband or your future wife is going to face the same amount of pressures the same amount of temptation, and so you need to pray. In fact, when I uh, 75, Lucy was fifth grade. She was in her fifth grade. And she, was, uh, she, she said, maybe it's because of your prayer that God keep me safe. And uh, she was not a born-again Christian at that time, and yet God somehow, you know, uh, kept her uh, through. So let Someone from the household of faith. Someone from a faith community. Not only a faith community. It is important that he or she believe that Jesus Christ is Savior. It is not just a Christian. Um, today, there are some people who, who wants to be a Christian just to get you, you know, just to get uh, a wife or just to get a husband. They want to be a Christian. There are people like that. But uh, someone from a household of faith. Abraham told his servant, you are going to find the, the wife of uh, Isaac. Go back to my home country. Don't find from the Canaanites. You know, these uh, non-Christian, if not the non-Jews. But go back to my home country and find someone who is from the faith community. So, number one is you need to have someone who is from your faith, uh, who have the same faith like you. If you don't have the same God together, you are going to have quite a lot of an issue. Uh, even um, the way we pray, uh, even the way we sing, the way we, you know, worship, uh, there has to be some similarities ideally. So someone from the household of faith, let's, let's begin with that. 
Secondly, someone who will share the same faith and values with you. It is important that you have at least good values together. I do not know. Um, these days, uh, yeah, values are very different from one another. For some people, uh, you know, my personal value, some people may say, is that I will choose for myself. I don't bother my parents. I don't bother about, you know, uh, prayer. That could be his own personal or her own personal values. But a real value comes when it is close with the Bible and good values, godly values. For example, being clean from sexual immoralities is a good value. God wants us to be holy. And so that kind of values. Um, I was talking with uh, a young man. He said, Uncle, my idea is I will sleep with any girl that I find on the way and finally married with a virgin. I said, okay, young man, listen carefully. You will marry someone who also will sleep with any man on the way. And in the end, you will meet. Because the Bible says, Galatians 6 verse 7 says that you will reap what you sow. If you sow, you know, rice, you reap rice. Don't think that from rice you can, you can reap pumpkin. No. <laughs> if you plant a pumpkin seed, you, you, you get pumpkin again. If you sow bad seed, you are going to reap bad fruits. So I said, do you believe that you will sleep with any man on the way as you grow up and get a virgin? God's formula didn't work like that. You know, God doesn't, you know, values are important. Did you raise your hand? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, you are talking about age. Uh, it is, uh, yeah, those are not, you know, in terms of age, in terms of, you know, age difference, um, I don't think that those are too much uh, a deciding factors. Yeah. Okay, my idea is um, that someone who believe in Jesus Christ, someone who love Christ, that is my household of faith, okay? And uh, I don't go into something like, um, for example, who may heard about Jesus but don't believe in it, I would not call that a household of faith. So my idea of household of faith is very much on Jesus Christ is my savior and Jesus is my Lord, you know? So that would be what I would call the household of faith, okay? Um, and uh, values are uh, very different from country to country. For example, um, if you go to Brazil, you cannot do like this. If you saw this sign, they will be offended. Why? Because, you know, for example, in India, if it is very true, Indian will say, ah, very good. But this is very uh, sensual for Brazilians. This means relationship. Uh, so each, each nation has different way of interpretation, isn't it? Um, Cultures are very different from one another. I do not know about 
you know, the uh, Norwegian culture, uh, but I assume that it is very much uh, close to the Western culture. Uh, being honest, uh, being, uh, you know, uh, Western culture is very much uh, uh, based on punctuality, um, individu individualistic, my rights are my rights, and uh, uh, I have every right to think differently. Um, those are uh, part of the inbuilt rights and values. Um, so, okay, um, someone who has a good character. Rebecca was known for having a good character. The Bible said she was beautiful and she was also a virgin. The Bible talks about, when it, the Bible talks about virgin, uh, the Bible is talking in terms of morality. And so the Bible is trying to say, Rebecca was a clean slate. Uh, she has a clean heart or a clean life. That doesn't mean that she, make, she doesn't make mistakes. But it particularly in the area of physical relationship, she maintained herself clean. And so God brought uh, Rebecca, uh, someone from uh, not just a Christian background, but uh, someone who has a good character. There are people who ask me, um, someone who loved me, who stopped dr drinking for uh, a month, should I love? I used to say, wait for at least a year. You know, some people will simply stop smoking, and yet they may smoke again. Uh, if it has to be a real commitment. It is not just a reform for a while and continue again. So good character. We are not going to test uh, you know, 10 upon 10 type of character. But it is important that this character comes from uh, fearing God uh, or honoring God, uh, that kind of character. Okay, so uh, someone from a good background, good character, and someone chosen and arranged by God. Uh, she has her inner beauty. That's what I, I want to underline. Rebecca was known for um, being hospitable. Um, uh, the key word was when Abraham's uh, servant prayed, Abraham's servant said like this, I will ask, I am standing here near the well. This is a well. And it was in the afternoon. He was thirsty. He has, you know, he came with many camels. And so he said, when I ask for water, the girl who said, or the lady who said, I will give you the drink and also I will give water to your camels. I will also give water to the camels. That would be the way that I know he or, or no, she is going to be my master's wife or Isaac's wife. So Rebecca came and Abraham's servant said, will you give me a drink? And she said, why not? And she fetched the water and gave her the drink. And then she said, I will also bring more water and give to your camels. Then Abraham's servant said, ha ha, now this is it. I will also give water to your camels. Then I will know. That's what, you know. Abraham's servant is asking for a sign, some way of knowing, because there are plenty of, you know, candidates, but out of those candidates, how do I know this particular person? And that, to know that, he, he said, when she said, or the lady who said, I will give water to your camel, that person will be uh, my master's uh, going to be wife, then someone who is hardworking and industrious. You don't want to ma marry a lazy person. Uh, someone who is hardworking, you know, who knows her duty, his duty. Um, I, uh, I was joking with my, my uh, second son, um, you know, when he was a young man. Um, uh, for him to get up early is not easy. So I used to say, uh, son, if you don't get up, you are going to make a sleeping family in the future. Uh -huh. uh, 
And um, I do not know, uh, but I have seen so many young people uh, who don't get up in the morning. Um, if it is not school day, they sleep on. Uh, but a disciplined person, someone who's tried to find something to do, uh, being active in life, it is important. You cannot feed a family without doing uh, you know, some activities, being hardworking. Uh, for students, hardworking is important. For any one of us, as a child of God, we need to be hardworking. So industrious and hardworking. Let's see. Um, someone whose parents approve. Now, this is from the text. When Rebecca brought that Abraham's servant to the parents, to her parents, then Abraham's servant said, I come here, I am the servant of Abraham, and I come here to find a wife for Isaac. And I was actually standing at the water uh, or at the well, and I, have deep, I prayed this prayer, and now I am proposing, you know, I'm proposing uh, Rebecca for Isaac. Then hearing the testimony, you know, hearing that story, um, Okay, uh, if I, you know, um, I, I wish that, you know, you pay attention, okay? Um, Isaac, when the parents came to know what actually happened, they said, why not? We approve that relationship. We are happy with the relationship. So parents' approval is also very important. Yes. Uh, parents' approval in general is healthy and important. But there will be exceptional cases. You know, you are not talking about, you know, for example, some fathers have a very peculiar habit. For example, those are not general rules. Um, and so uh, it, when I say parents' approval, uh, sometimes um, parents' approval even though they may like the person, they may not jump into saying yes immediately. I know Jomi will struggle. Your parents will struggle for a while. Uh, I do not know here, but I have lived long enough, you know, uh, in the United States, and I know how our parents, you know, struggle. Very often they say, don't even think of uh, the black person. You know, they would put their hands like this. Don't think of a black man, a black woman. Ah, oh my goodness. Ah, they, they started saying even in terms of, you know, general. Ah, so I used to say, uh, let us not talk about the skin color. Let us talk about the character. You know, sometimes the skin color, uh, skin color, just wait, okay? Skin color, um, is very deceptive. Uh, and also making a general rule is very, uh, very tricky. In fact, it is not always good to make a general rule by saying any black person will be untrustworthy. That's wrong. Because any white person could be trustworthy. That's wrong too. Just because uh, the skin is white doesn't mean that the heart is white, isn't it? So there has to be it, you know, it is not general rule. It depends on, like as we said, the background. It depends on each in individual values. Do we subscribe to those values? For example, 
uh, um, LC, L, you know, L, L, LT, is it L, L, um, LT, LGBTQ. Uh, the abbreviation is too long now, so. <laughs> so, for example, someone, um, I also talk to young people on transgender, you know, class. And uh, there was one guy, it's a story, and it, uh, it happened in reality. Her daughter, a, a mother's daughter, single mother's daughter, fall in love with a man. So they have been dating three years. Then this man disappeared for about two years. And that man, during that two years, changed his gender. And one day, uh, I have to call him, you know, now see that person. So up and date this girl again. And now the mother said, I don't know. Earlier, he was a boy. Now my daughter is dating a girl. It's so confusing, you know, today's generation. Do you subscribe to that value? Do you think that is a value? And you like that value? Oh, yeah, you, a question. Yeah. Science says that, but let me also say this. Okay, let me also say that. Man, when I lecture, I am using my left brain. Female can use both brains at once. That science says that. Just because you change from a female to a male, huh, and you cannot do anything on your brain. To be a female, I have to increase my hormone so that I will resemble female. I need medicine you know, to, to, to increase my biological changes. And so those are the things that happen. And so, um, just wait, okay? Uh, science doesn't always prove right. Uh, yeah. So then they have an extra, extra hormone that makes them look like a female. Yeah. What do you think about that? Do you actually think it's a thing? Like I can actually get hurt by being a female? Or is it something that you can actually get hurt? Okay. There are some specific, yes. particular specific areas which may have a difference. But let us also say God made two genders. God made two genders. Adam and Eve, there is no third gender in the Garden of Eden. And today, we develop science, we, the philosophy changed, and uh, our lifestyle changed too, isn't it? And so there is female and female, male and male, being close to one another. And I do not know. I, I don't have the, you know, those in my Bible. So <laughs> don't say that I am just very outdated. Uh, I debated with a, a medical doctor in Kansas. Um, he tried to prove to me from science and medicine. I said, please listen to me. I also read through. Only 2% are born like that. Then the medical science 
doctor said, you are right. Just 2%, just 2% are born like that, so you are talking 97, 98 people should follow the 2%? Don't draw that. You know, don't draw that general conclusion by saying only two persons are born like that. For example, penguins. Penguins is the only animal that try to relate male and male, female and female. Just because penguin relates, we should not say, therefore, we should have homosexual relationship. A dog, a male dog and a male dog never relate. A cow, a sea cow and, you know, uh, only cow, not a bull, and a bull doesn't relate. So when it comes to conclusion, um, we need to draw a, you know, a general statement uh, saying that we need to look at uh, the general percentage. Okay. All right. Um, don't think that I'm just putting down. I am answering from my reading too, okay. Uh, can he wait, okay, I need. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. All right, thank you. Mm. I need to kind of, you know, try to complete. Okay, someone who will choose to be with you the rest of your life would be something like Rebecca said, okay, I want to be with Isaac the rest of my life. And so that is, uh, you know, we said God's will. Um, and someone who is deeply in love and make you feel complete. Uh, this is from Genesis chapter 22, oh no, 24. And Genesis chapter 24 talks about Isaac and Rebecca relationship. Uh, Isaac was out in the field when the servant came with uh, Rebecca, and Rebecca uh, asked the servant, is that uh, Isaac? And she got down from the camel. Um, the Bible said, Isaac took her as his wife, and he feels complete, uh, because uh, recently, uh, Isaac lost his mother. And so Isaac was comforted uh, from that, uh, from finding a wife, and he feels complete, if not, the Rebecca also feels complete. Now, I want to close with a few steps and then maybe tell a little story. Number one, uh, Abraham's servant start with prayer. He said, I am going to pray, Lord. He prayed, Lord, give me success. Um, Genesis 24 is a text or a Bible that has a lot of uh, words called success. So, we need to pray you know, to find God's will, number one. Number two, he also said, I am standing here. He didn't say, I am running. He didn't say, I'm going. But he said, I'm standing here waiting. So one is prayer, one is also waiting. Um, in God's will, let me also say, God's will has God's timing. No. God's will also has God's timing. God, God's power, God's love are available all the time. But, for example, when it comes to marriage, when it comes to any life issue, it is important to know that God's will also has God's timing. Um, God is the one who actually chooses times. For example, Galatians chapter 4, Paul said, in the due time or in the right time, God sent his son. Um, God act and God act in the right time and God will also, you know, do that. Um, uh, his will in the right time. So standing uh, at the well and he said, uh, I am actually, this is a surrendering kind of prayer. He said, I will ask for a drink and I would also, you know, want to know, uh, I will water your camels too. You know, this is the, the word that uh, Abraham's servant said. I will be able to differentiate between uh, your choice and not your choice by this word, I will water your camels too. So he surrendered because he doesn't know the right person. 
to, so there is also a surrender, not you know, saying, I must get uh, by holding on, but uh, believing that God will lead on. Um, and not only surrendering, but God's choice is knowable. By this, I will know that you have shown kindness to your servant. By this, when she said, I will water your camels too, uh, that I will know that uh, you are choosing for um, your servant. And then God answered her, you know, his prayer. Before he finished his prayer, Rebecca came. God does answer our prayers. You know, God is the one who answers. And finally, God gives the best. In the, in the first question, I ask you, will God give you the best? And God indeed gives the best. Um, My, um, my journey um, to make, uh, to close with, you know, this session, uh, I was, I received Jesus in the year 1974. 1975, there was an evangelical union camp where I was taught uh, or I came to know that I need to pray for God's will. I need to pray that God, uh, you know, uh, to find God's will, I need to pray. And so I started uh, thinking about how to pray for my future wife. I was in my 10th grade, 1975. So I, every Tuesday, I used to pray, God, I do not know who is going to be my future wife, but I pray that you will help me to find the person. In your time, I'm not going to go searching around. But in your time, 1975, 76, until 1985, 10 years, I was, I completed my studies. I have done my theolog theological studies, secular studies. I finished my MA and, um, and, and I still, you know, continue to pray every Tuesday for my future wife. Then, 1985, um, um, there was a, a, a conference, youth conference, where I happened to see Lucy. Um, they have a big four-story medicine cell. You know, father was a mediciner. So, uh, we met. I, I didn't know whether she has a boyfriend. Uh, I was the main speaker for a main speaker to go and talk to ladies are not good. <laughs> so I, uh, we met in the tea hotel. I said, are you going to United States? Because someone told me you are planning to go for studies in the U.S. She said, yeah, I am uh, waiting for father was trying to sponsor her. You know, father... Uh, has enough money to sponsor her in United States. So they are looking for uh, to change rupees into dollar. But those days, uh, Reserve Bank of India uh, restricted that, that change. Uh, so Lucy could not go. 85, we met October, uh, October 10 to 13th, the conference. And after that, we did not talk. So... 86 um, February, she came uh, to invite me uh, to be a speaker in, a, in their village or their town uh, youth camp. So I said, okay, I'll pray about it. Uh, so as I was on my way to the camp, I prayed this, this prayer. It was inside the bus. Here is, a, I am sitting in the bus and I said, God, this travel is going to be a different travel for me. I met Lucy six months ago, and she has been in my mind, and I have been praying about um, whether she would be my wife. And so I'm going to propose if, if uh, this time, you know, not only to preach in the camp, but I'm going to propose if the circumstances is right. And so um, I said I want to see two conditions, like, 
Abraham's servant who asked for a sign. I said two signs. Number one sign is when we reach the, the town um, in the bus station, uh, as I get down, Lucy will pick up my luggage. Mm. Because camp committee are, you know, big numbers. We are two speakers. So um, as we get down, uh, just one sign that Lucy would pick up my bag. Now you can say that's a coincidence. It is also can be coincidence. But five of them came and they pick up my friend's bag. The five of them left without picking up my bag. And Lucy came and picked up my bag. And so I said, Lord, this seems to be okay. But that, uh, uh, you know, these days, uh, if you are an uh, expert in logic, you will say that's a coincidence. But another one, which is not a coincidence anymore, is God, if I'm going to, if Lucy is going to be my wife, Make this game very successful. Transform the life of young people. And if you transform, if the gospel transform these young people's life, and I am able to see with my eyes the fruit of transformation, then I will know that Lucy is going to be not just my wife, but we are going to work together for your ministry. I'm not searching for a wife only. I am searching for a partner who will carry the yoke of God's ministry. And so I said, God, make this camp successful. Then if it is successful, I will talk to her. But if it is not successful, I better keep quiet. So uh, three, three days, young people started coming to Christ, and we could see how they respond to the, you know, to the call of God. Or uh, life-changing, you know, Drunkards came into camp with bottles, and they throw away the bottles. And so there are transformations that we could see. But my father was hospitalized, and um, they said, you need to come home. He is in a very critical condition. So um, the third night, the fourth morning, before I go back, I have one time to preach one sermon. So I said, God, this morning before I leave, if there are 10 people who receive Jesus Christ during my sermon, when I said, when I finish my sermon, if I said, uh, now those of you who receive Christ during my sermon, if 10 people stood up, I will share, I will talk to Lucy. But if it is less than 10, I will not talk. So one sermon. I still remember I preached on the cross of Jesus. This is 1986, April. Uh, the cross of Jesus, when I look at the cross of Jesus, I see my sin. When I look at the cross of Jesus, I see my, uh, God's love. How much God loves me. And when I look at the cross of Jesus, I see my forgiveness. I'm forgiven. These three sermons. And so, in the end, I say, those of you who make a decision and who already said, yes, my sins are God forgiven in Jesus Christ. And I believe it. And please stand up and come to the front. So, they came to the front. I asked them to kneel down. And when I count the number, 20 of them came. I asked for 10, and 20 of them came. So in the end, after prayer, I told Lucy, last year in October, we met. I, you know, my prayer for these six months, God seems to be leading me towards you. That's what I say. God seems to be leading towards me towards you. But I do not know from your end. Would you mind if you pray about it, that if God who leads me can also lead you, you to watch me. 
But if there is no leading, thank you. But if there is any leading from your side, then I believe that God is going to match us up together as husband and wife. So I waited. Uh, she said, yes, I'll pray. And so I waited for a month. Then she responded saying, in fact, I also prayed from October last year, uh, not knowing that whether you would have any girlfriend or you are already you know, engaged. But uh, thank you for you know, asking me. Uh, I sense that God is leading me towards you. And so that's how we end up uh, as a husband and wife. Uh, I want you to, you know, it may not be exactly the way God lead, you know, God led me. God has, you know, you are unique. God will lead you in different ways. And, uh, uh, and yet, let us also remember, you all, you know, all, all of you have said, God knows the best. God knows your future. God has a plan for your future. And God will lead you to the right person in his time, okay? In his time, in his way. Okay, um, can we stand up together? Let us all, all right, stand up. Thank you. Um, I want to pray for you uh, because uh, this is a crucial, actually a very crucial um, uh, topic. Uh, we have been uh, traveling around, uh, around uh, especially the 35 nations where uh, Joe Mies are settled, you know. And uh, one of the questions they keep on asking is, how do I know God's will? And this is one topic that we would like to share with you too. Uh, let me pray, okay? Let's pray. Father, I pray that you would also reveal your plan, your will, so that these young people in their own life journey will be able to find the right person in the right time, in the right circumstances, and also, Lord, ultimately for the right purpose to glorify you. I pray that uh, each one of them, uh, with the temptations around, uh, whether it is uh, a temptation to shorten, uh, to find our own direction, even uh, to, to make a selfish decision, I pray that, Lord, give you, you will give them patience. You will also give them uh, the ability to understand that God, in spite of sometimes, didn't reveal quickly his will, and yet God is willing to reveal his will to each one of us. And thank you, Lord, for these afternoon sessions. I pray that uh, you will um, teach them and you would also show your way. As the psalmist said, Lord, instruct me your way because your ways are the best for us. And so you have designed the way and pr I pray that you would lead them in the way that they should go. So we thank you and we commit ourselves to you with thanksgiving. We offer this prayer through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you. Have a good, a good uh, rest or a good game. Yeah. <laughs>